Just a nice piece of wiring right here that I did and spent a lot of time on. Well, <laughs> let me update that. Today's video, we got a little bit of a change of scenery. I'm in my kitchen. And uh, why am I in my kitchen? We're gonna cook? No. Or we're gonna uh, do kitchen project? No. <laughs> but it's a wet and rainy day outside and uh, I finally purchased something for the Magnum that I've been needing for a long time. And well, let's just get into it and show you what I got. Yes, got us a new radio. Um, and all the stuff to install it. So uh, it's kind of been overdue. The radio and the Magnum, the Magnum came with a factory navigation and it sounds good and everything, but uh, I listen to mostly stuff on my phone. And uh, so either podcasts or music or whatever else, you know, I listen to it through the Bluetooth. And I've tried a couple different options that have just not panned out well for the uh for the car and uh, what i would like to have for it so it's time for me to upgrade the thing now i was going to do a backup camera and uh unfortunately the one i want is on back order so that's going to be a whole nother video but i figured i'd show you guys uh just the process that uh i use to install this radio i don't know if it's correct or mec mcep or what mecp one of those things certified but uh yeah i figured I, i'd share that with you and one of the first things that i do is i go ahead and sit down get comfortable and i wire up the harness so that's why i'm inside i can just uh pull up a, a, a stool here at my counter or my kitchen table and uh look at schematics and everything plan it out and kind of start wiring so let me get set up and then we'll we'll get started all right, we might as well do that whole unboxing thing. So I've been doing some research and figuring out what I want to put in a Magnum. I didn't really want to put a super cheap radio in it, but I also didn't want to spend a thousand dollars on it. So I decided this Kenwood, after looking at a lot of different things, would uh, hit the spot. Kenwood and JVC, I think, are kind of the same company. Um, and I've always had good luck with Kenwood and with their radios back in the day when I was doing this more often. And this has kind of everything that I need on it. It has a uh, uh, Android um, Auto and all the other cool stuff. Uh, I probably won't. Re I'm not reviewing this radio because I think it's just going to work and fit my needs. I don't really. I'm not going to get into audio dynamics or anything else like that. That's over the, my head. But uh, I think this is going to be pretty cool. Man, radios are much smaller nowadays than they used to be. But check that out. And uh, a little bit of wiring in it. That looks good. I'm going to set that off the side so I don't mess it all up. Let me see if I get the uh, harness out here, which I imagine this is it. There we go. All right. So harness, instructions, faceplate thingy. We're going to look all of that in a little while. Adapters, brackets, you know general stuff I'm not sure what that is but we'll find out and uh, so there's that piece of it and then the other piece that I got is this um, wiring harness uh, for the Magnum the adapter harness and what's kind of important about this thing is my Magnum has radio controls on the steering wheel which are what's known as CAN bus um, the whole car is CAN bus as far as I know. And in order to get those to work, you have to have a module, which this is the module here. Um, part number is in there somewhere. I don't know if I needed this kit per se because this is like a more expensive kit. 
and I'm not sure what the difference is between this one and the cheaper kit. I think this is $185. The cheaper kit is like $119. And uh, I don't know the difference, but they had this in stock. I've kind of been searching for a while and I was like, you know what? I'm here. I want to do it today. I'm tired of the radio in the car. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, buy it today and get it done. <laughs> so uh, let me get uh, everything sorted and, and figured out and then I'll get right back with you. I have a plan. I just pulled the navigation out of the Magnum. I will show you guys how to do that. I literally took about three minutes to do it, so that's not very hard to do. Um, so I'll show you guys that in a little bit, but since we're working on wiring, what I had to do, I had to figure out which plug to use. So this kit comes with two plugs. Uh, one is square and one has got like beveled edges. So I needed to pull the radio out and compare those and since you can see that that's a square style and this is a square style. This is the one I'm gonna use because the factory harness in the car is gonna plug into this just like it would the radio. So that part's out of the way. Then I have my wiring diagrams and uh, they're not color, but I can read. So there's that. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple different things here. So I know I'm not gonna use this one. I'm gonna throw it off to the side so I don't accidentally use it. Uh, but this right here, vehicle connector, is referring to this gray uh, installation plug. SWC connector is talking about the steering wheel controls, which is going to be this connector. So there's that. And then these connectors here are for the actual Kenwood radio and are what I'm going to need to connect to this harness. And all the outlines for this are right here. So now we know which uh, which harness uh, goes where, what the what the wires are for, and everything else like that. We can hook all this up together. I'm not gonna go one by one on this because you should be able to know that if I'm looking at this uh, accessory seven, which I think is uh, this one right here, because it's got different color wires, got different color matched wires. It says white. Uh, white goes to the front left speaker and I'll look on here and I'll go hey look at that it's the same color so that's nice and easy and I will hook up my white wire wherever it is in this one right here there it is to my white wire on this side now there's a white and a black if you've never done this before uh, I imagine most people have uh, the white and black is going to go to the negative side so there's a white and black wire in here they may not always be color matched, but as long as you follow this and compare it to this, you're going to be just fine. Just take your time. So let me uh, let me show you what we're going to use to do all this wiring. This is my nice little wiring kit that I put together because I like to drop screwdrivers. No, uh, I have my little wiring kit that I've had for quite a while. I should have my, yep, everything in there. When it comes to wiring, good tools will save you so much time. So if you're gonna get into doing a lot of wiring, if you're buying like a Terminator X or something, you know, and you, and you know that you're gonna be busy, I highly recommend buying some good tools. Like I said, I bought this stuff at Summit. You can see this one even has a part number on it, which is, SUM 900405. This I bought from Amazon. The ratcheting mechanism broke, but I still use it and I, the, the screw fell out too. Um, and it's, uh, it's a non-insulated crimping tool. Um, and I bought it off Amazon. I don't remember what it cost. It looks like it says SV010602. I don't know if you can still find that or not. I don't think I have a part number on this, but this is just a wire stripper I bought from Summit Racing. And then I have my Nipex. Um, I don't I don't want to say what I usually call these, but <laughs> wire cutters there, let's call them that. And uh, also I usually have a test light, which is not really gonna come in handy here because we already have the diagram. I don't need to use this, but one of these days I would really like to go into like a 
wire electrical diagnosing stuff to kind of show you guys how to use these very simple parts because um, a lot of people get online and they're like hey how do you fix this or how do you fix that and we can't really answer you or help you uh, without you diagnosing some of this stuff yourself so you've got to you know use a test light to find your ground or your power or however else you need to do and uh, it's not too big of a deal once you learn how to do this it's a very very essential tool as well as a, um, a voltmeter that has a continuity tester but that's a video for later on down the road but let's get set up here and get started on crimping I'll show you that process and then I'll I'll get after it and get it all done I'm probably going to overkill this wiring. It's just something that I've started doing uh, with wiring and uh, it's probably not necessary. So I'm gonna show you two ways to do it. One will be perfectly acceptable with insulated butt connectors. The wiring that I'm going to do is non-insulated butt connectors with heat shrink. Um, and I do this for a couple different reasons. It packages it a whole lot smaller for one. And it's just, it's a, uh, it's just a, a good foolproof connection, but it's not necessary on a radio install. So let me show you how you would do it with insulated butt connectors in case you're doing it this way to save a little bit of money and a little bit of time. Um, and then I'll show you the way that I'm gonna do it for mine. All right, here's a little red strand of wire. We're gonna use this to demonstrate non-insulated butt connectors. So I'm gonna cut this thing in the middle and now we wanna connect these two together my strippers here have teeth that hold the wire and then two teeth that strip the wire this little adjuster here brings up and down uh, this tool so you can go for thicker wire or thinner wire but anyway it's not real hard you kind of get it to where you want squeeze bingo it pulls it right off Saves you all kinds of headache doing it with a set of tools like these because using your teeth is not great. <laughs> using uh, wire cutters, you know, you can do a good job if you're really skilled at it, but this stuff is so quick and easy. All right, so now I have two sections of wires that are like, oh, three eighths of an inch, quarter of an inch, maybe a little, a little longer, and I wanna connect them together. So I'm gonna take my non-insulated crimp, uh, butt connector you can buy these in a package for like five bucks at O'Reilly's I'm gonna put it on the wire make sure it's in correctly my summit crimping uh, pliers it's real simple you just put it in the red you see red in there make sure that wires sit in there pretty good and then crimp then bingo you get a beautiful nice crimp and I'm pulling on it it's not coming off so then you just follow that with the other side make sure it doesn't fall off bingo you're done so that's all there is to connecting these wires together this way now let me show you how i'm going to do it with a non-insulated butt connector first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to connect that white wire we were talking about earlier but I'm going to trend this down a whole lot because it's just going to make packaging a whole lot better when you put it in the car. Um, because, yeah, there's going to be plenty of room from there to there. Anyway, long story short, it's just going to it's going to reduce all that unnecessarily wiring. So I'm going to cut these down some. And then I have those for pretty much nothing anymore. But I'm going to look at my white wire. You can see these has two wires together here. I'm going to split it down the middle with my wire cutters and then separate them out. And that's going to make it a whole lot easier to crimp. Um, you have to do it anyway, but let's go ahead and strip this wire just like I showed you a little bit ago. Get it all ready and then i'm going to get this harness uh car harness side ready um i'm going to pull i'm going to pull about half of that off of there do the same thing but instead of using that insulated crimp 
uh, butt connector. I'm going to use this non-insulated. And they're still color-coded. I got these from O'Reilly's. They're actually pretty nice. They're not cheap, though. But let me show you how it's done. So my non-insulated uh, crimper tool has a whole bunch of different sizes. So you've got four sizes on this side, four sizes on that side. And the reason it does that because it's it's built to do two different kinds of connectors. Um, and some of those are the connectors that fold over onto the wire, which I don't have to show you right now. I just have to kind of take my word for it because it does this, like this one has a step down. It's bigger back here. So it does the part of the uh, insulate of the wire back here. And then it does the exposed wire up here. And uh, another day I will show you guys that. But in the instance that we're doing here, we just need it to do basically half of it and as I look at this I'm trying to figure out which one I want to use this one is 1 to 1 1.5 and that is 2.5 so I think I'm going to use this one so I put it in there and it's on the other side because that's the tighter crimp side I'm gonna put my wire in it very carefully maybe and I'm gonna crimp it down this one I like to do a couple times and then I pop it out and look at the beautiful crimp that it gives you I don't know if it's gonna show you but just take my word it's it's a really nice crimp and it's not going anywhere now before we're done we're gonna take our heat shrink tubing throw it over our connection which looks like I'm going to have to cut this little bit of uh, tape out to get it down far enough. Actually, you know what? I'll do it on the other side. I'll throw it on here. I'll kind of get it, all the wires tightened up. And I'll get it in place. And then I will carefully do the same thing again. Sometimes it makes it a little easier to get it in place first and then put the wire in so I'm gonna like to do that again sorry I'm probably talking a little soft because I'm concentrating but let's get this dude in there crimp it there we go nice very clean crimp connection and I'll show you the difference look how much that space is going to take up on that insulated versus the non-insulated so when you wrap all those together they make a big old clumpy mess that's why I'm not doing it but I will put my heat shrink over this and then this is not rocket science you just get a lighter wherever I put it make sure it's centered And you shrink it down. So there's one wire done. You know, get a, get a little tug, make sure it's good. Don't pull it real, real hard. This wire is very fragile. But there we go. So now I just need to do that a uh, whole bunch more times, and then we'll be done with it. Okay. I found out what the difference is between this more expensive install kit versus the less expensive one and that has to do with like the factory DVD player which they call the VES system. Good news is if you have a vehicle that has it and it's in within a certain uh, year range you can continue to use that which I think you can continue to use it on my Magnum with just the headphones but it doesn't integrate into the radio but some later models it does integrate in the radio. What I'm getting at is I didn't need it, <laughs> but <laughs> that's okay. I, you know, I got this thing today and I'm about done. Um, almost. I mean, I got a few things to do. Let me show you the harness. So harness is all done. These are the radio harnesses that goes into the Kenwood here. This goes into the um, steering wheel control module, which is what this is. Um, we're pretty much good to go. I did have to use a bigger regular butt connector because I put both of these 12 volt uh, hots 
into this section here. Um, same thing with the ground. You can see I've got two wires going into the ground on there and one here. And again, I think it might be because this needs a ground. This all nice piece of wiring right here that I did and spent a lot of time on. Well, had I read the instructions, I would have known that on my car particularly, I uh, only have to connect the front outputs of here to the rear outputs of here. And uh, in doing so, uh, because of the factory amplifier in that car, it'll work correctly. If I don't do it that way, it won't work correctly. So, uh, <laughs> let me update that. Now I have to configure this, which is the steering wheel controls, which it says right here that um, the interface comes pre-programmed for all vehicles fac with factory steering wheel controls and does not require programming unless you wish to reassign steering wheel controls or functions. So short press, long, uh, long press, dual command functionality, that's kind of cool. Uh, steering wheel control can always be restored to the default settings, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it's pre-controlled, but you do have to configure it. And so if we're looking at this here, you've got your different manufacturers of aftermarket radios, and then you've got your settings. So it tells you uh, Kenwood, my rad new radio is a Kenwood, so it needs to be setting set to three. And the rocker switch is right here. I don't know if y'all can see that. It's sitting right now. It's it's probably a little blurry for y'all. Right now I can tell you it's pointing up. And I'm going to move it. Try to move it. One, two, three. So now the arrow's pointing to three. Uh, I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see that on there. It's awfully tiny. Um, and then there is this. And I'm just, I need to, I need to figure out what to hook this to. So let me, let me look at that real quick. After further inspection, there is a blue with yellow wire right here. And there, that's the same color as the steering wheel control wire. So that's where this goes. So now I just gotta hook those up and we'll be ready to install it in the car. Okay, let's take this dude out. It's not real hard. Put your vents in, pry gently from the top and then work all your clips a little bit at a time. I've had this off a couple times, so it's easy for me. But uh, if you haven't had yours off, be real careful. Then there's a clip for your functions up top. There's two clips here for your climate control. And that's out. And then four screws, two on each side. Pretty easy to get to pull out. Don't lose your screws. All right, and carefully pull it up. There's a cable right here. You gotta pull out carefully. Let's see. How do you pull that dude out? Here it goes. Your antenna, and then your wiring for your radio, which there's two, one there. And one there. And there it is. Radio is out. This install kit's a bit of a puzzle, but I think I got it figured out. Pulled the clamshell off of it. Don't need it. This is the bezel. There's writing on it. Best way I can tell you is the plugs for alignment dowels are at the bottom. So make sure the top of the radio is up here. 
but you have to put these guys in place and they are directional so luckily they've made that easy for you maybe I say easy i might need greg to yeah, help me out here I remember when i did the infinity these were not fun not a blast were, i struggled with them because it's like can you put the radio up because yeah, it's like three moving pieces right like or four moving there we go okay is that oh, i don't think it's in no it's not moving oh okay it looks good all right so that kind of goes like that. This is not going to be detailed for you guys because it's a little difficult to <laughs> do everything at once. Yeah. That's these. Hallelujah. Yeah, there you go. All right. And there's six of them, so I guess we'll do three and three. All right. Did you find a hole and screw it? Yep, pretty much. Seems like it's okay. Does it need the bezel? No, it does not need the bezel. So the factory bezel, you're not going to use it. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's get the antenna plugged in. I already have the adapter on it. Yep. There's that. Then. There's this. Maybe go under. Hmm. Um, USB will probably come down here. Yeah, maybe like, or like have it come out like right here or something and just kind of feed yeah, it, it in here and then just have the, just have the cord. You see what I mean? Well, for right now, I can just come up there if I can get it. Yeah. Felt something. Up oh, there. Yep. Ah. I think I got it. Yep. Got it. Sweet. That'll be perfect for now. And then feed it through, and mm -hmm. then I'll just keep going. Oh. Good. And then I could just like feed there it you. under. And here's your here's your wire. Got yep. It. Right here. That'll be perfect for now, then I'll find a way to get it mounted. Yeah, they make those things on Amazon where it comes with the hole saw. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know, you just drill it and you yeah. put it through and then you, you know, tighten I'll drill it. the bezel before I drill that because you can replace the bezel. All right, let's finish this up. I got one screw in already. Yeah, that would be bad. That would not be good. All right, hook up your air controls. Set the F word on camera. Uh, I have the ability to bleep. Bleep. We get demonetized. Children are never gonna be offended. Right. All right. Yeah, that works. No. Fits pretty good. Looks good. Let's see if it turns on. Yep, turn it on. Language is English. Looks good. Let's go to the clock. Clock adjust is 217. And it is 217 is January 21st. Let's look at that. Oh, that looks clean. Nice. Um, Touch screen looks good. Nice. Colors and everything. Where's the Bluetooth connect? There it is. Looks like that. Let's connect. Sharp, dude. The screen's nice and sharp. It's yeah, clean. It's crisp. Like, yeah. The color looks great. You could probably change the colors too to make it like red. I imagine I could. Yeah. Let's, Let's do jam some non-copyrighted tunes. Right. I gotta find them. 
Um, do I have any? <laughs> Probably. I don't know if you could YouTube non-copyright songs. Or oh, they do have some on there. I, I'm sure you can pull it up. Let's see other thing. Oh, hey, look at that. It already works. The steering wheel control works. Yes. All right. Let me get back to Bluetooth. Okay. It is playing. Skip ad. Don't hear anything, though. So where's the volume? Hmm. Well, no es bueno. Everything in else silence. is working. We Do it in silence. Right. It's just our own thoughts. <laughs>
on my ignition switch, which was a bit of a job. Um, and I had watched kind of a video on how to do it before, but they missed a couple bolts. So I'm glad I didn't kind of hurry up and do that one. I apologize for not, uh, for not videoing it, but, um, I actually had to get it done so I could get to an event and I'm glad I got it done and I got to the events. Um, so, uh, there's plenty of write-ups on it and stuff online. So if you ever need to do it, if anything, about these cars is true with these LX platform cars. They all have the same failure points and they're pretty easy to fix so far. So there's that. But I do have one more update for you and I would love to show you guys that. In case you don't know, this car is 184,000 miles or so I think I have on it now. And uh, the interior is a bit rough. These seats have seen better days, obviously, right? Well, guess what I found on the internet? When you're looking, sometimes you get lucky. And I've got a set of brand new front seats for this thing. Uh, they need a little cleaning, but they are in so much better conditions than the ones I have right now, which uh, are pretty deplorable. <laughs> so I'll be happy to get all that cleaned up. The person that had it before me or people that had it before me really didn't take a lot of pride in keeping the car clean and uh updated so i've got a lot of things coming i got a set of floor mats i've got a, a detail kit coming i've cleaned the dash up pretty well and some of the other things the back seat's not too bad it needs to be cleaned um but there's no holes or anything in it which is good but uh man it just it just i need to clean the carpet real well uh, get the new floor mats in it get the new seats in it when they're cleaned and that's a project coming up pretty soon i'm also going to put a rear view camera in it so i'm about to order all that stuff so this car's coming a long long ways i'm super stoked because it's it's just becoming very very enjoyable i do got to fix the airbags on it which is a different thing i was gonna get it done at the dealership but i'm concerned about them breaking my dash so i've been a little apprehensive about that so i need to find out more about that but i love the old maggie it's a great car it's something that i i'm so glad that i bought um and i'm going to continue to keep upgrading as we go the more i do to this car the more i love it still got some things like the uh to fix the wheels order some tires i need to reflow some of these plastics i think i need another trim piece oh boy uh, that dude's coming up I'm gonna have to fix that <laughs> but we got some things to do like that you know and um, well the more I get to know this car the, the more I'm gonna fall in love with it maybe I'll keep it for a while so anyways I'm gonna end it off there thanks for coming along just a little radio install and and uh, you know, making this thing more available to drive long distances and really cruise and have fun. So I'd love to do power tour in this thing. I don't know if it's in the cards this year, but this would be a great power tour car, I think. Anyways. All right. Well, we have a whole lot of projects right now. We're not uh, working on any in this garage. They're in the shop, but uh, I'm still working on uh, my LS Swap Dakota, Gramps, the Twin Turbo LS Dakota. Uh, Nova Bel Air we've got a new project but I cannot wait to show you guys and uh, yeah we, we got a lot going on so if you want to come along with us and hang out see what we're working on see what we're taking to the track see what we're having fun with please consider subscribing we'd love to have you along and uh, other than that you know if you already have subscribed thank you guys so much and uh, we'll see you next time so until next time, you know the deal. Y'all be good.